Okay, um, what's up? I'm going to spend a little bit of time just messing around, just um, proving some uh, tautologies and formal logic on a truth table. Um, we're going to do some just common, common easy ones and um, talk about talk about that. Um, I'm going to see if I can't do a share screen here. All right, so here's a list of some uh, tautologies. This is um, it's a whole a whole host of them here. Some of these are um, this is like the law of contraposition. Um, just shows uh, the contrapositive of of uh, A implies B um, is the same as saying uh, not B implies A. Um, here is the law of excluded middle. Um, here is a basic, a very basic tautology. This right here um, is reductio ad absurdum. Um, not A implies B and not A implies not B. Um, that would imply A. Um, this right here is the law of syllogism. If A implies B and if B implies C, then that would imply A implying C. Um, <clears throat> so, so let's see. Um, here, we would just have to do um, the truth table for A and not A, and that would just be T, oops, T, F, and F, T. And then, so, so now that we have the truth table lined out, we would just have to apply the OR function. And since this OR is inclusive, um, the inclusive OR function um, is is basically let, let me see if I can do it uh, here like this P I'm just going to show the inclusive or function if P or Q um, the truth table for P or Q would look like P or Q it would be whoops the formatting is going to be a little messy here a little bit Okay, so here this would be, so here's our tautology, either A or not A. Here's the truth table for A or not A. Now we need to apply the um, function of the inclusive OR. So I'm just going to show the inclusive OR function here. So these are the truth table for P and Q. And then here is the function um, for the formula uh, P um, or Q. So how it works with the inclusive OR is that the only time that the inclusive OR would be false would only be when both when both are false, right? Um, so uh, if it's either uh, P or Q, and one and both of these are true, then the statement uh, is true. If it's P is true and Q is false, then the statement of the inclusive OR is also true. If P is false and then Q is true, it's also true because only one of the variables or both have to be true. So they would be true under that interpretation. And the only interpretation in which uh, P um, or Q would be false would be if both of the um, propositional variables were false. So what we can look, so with knowing that, this gives us the entire function of the inclusive or in formal logic. And what we notice is that um, since both of these two, only one of these or both of these has to be true in order for the formula to read true, then here we would notice that both of these would read true as well, since it only has to be either true, I mean, either A or not A, and only one has to be true or both. Here one's true and here one's true. So this, so um, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the inclusive or function. So now that we know how that works, what we're going to do is we're going to apply that to this situation. Um, so now we're going to do uh, A or B. 
not A. And then we would know that only one or both has to be true. That's true. And then that's true. So this uh, statement here is true under every possible interpretation. So this would be a verified uh, formal tautology, either A or not A. Um, pretty simple. Uh, so let's move on to the next tautology that we're going to verify, which is going to be the law of excluded middle, which happens to be the exact same thing um, that we just did. So um, here it would all read the same. We're just going to do a truth table for P and not P. It's going to read the same as a truth table for A and not A. Um, and then when we look at the entire function, P and not P, we'll notice that both interpretations are true. So this would be another verified tautology here. So let's move on to a little more complex. So um, as you can see, this one here, these two just worked off one function, the, the OR function, the inclusive OR function. But this one is going to work off a couple of different functions. It's going to work off the equivalency function, and it's going to work off of um, the uh, material implication um, function. Um, so here, what we're going to do is you can see that we have A, B, and not B. So we have to construct a, a truth table for A, B, and not B. Okay, so the easiest way to do this is just do a truth table for A and B, um, and that's going to look just like any two variable truth table, TF, FT. And now we're going to do the third um, propositional variable of not B, which is just going to be the, the um, opposite of what we have for B. So we're just going to read the same as A here. So it's going to be T and F. Um, so now that we have that all of our variables, we can start um, applying these. So we're going to do this function. Okay, so uh, A and B, so we can look here. A implies B. What, what you'll notice is under the implication function, the only time this is false is when the um, antecedent is true and the consequent is false. So you'll notice here in this, in this one that since we're doing A and B, that the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. So this would be false under this interpretation, and it would be true under this interpretation. Okay. Now what we need to do is we need let's do um, the this function here. Copy. Let me paste that down here. So we're going to do for not b. Okay. This is going to be the antecedent, and then this is going to be the consequence. So um, not B, so it's going to look like this. Uh, they both read the same, TT and FT. So what we're going to notice is since neither one of these has an example where the antecedent is true and the consequent is false, then both of these interpretations have to be, have to be true. Um, so with that, with that being said, when, so just, to, just to go over it, when the antecedent is true and the consequent is true, that is true. That is a, um, a material implication there is true. Or, uh, and then if the antecedent um, is, or the antecedent is false and the consequent is true, that would also be true for a material implication. So we'd have these as true and true. So now we need to take um, these two um, functions and see uh, if they're um, equivalent. So, um, let me let me see here. Make sure I've make sure I've done this right. Look through my look through my notes here. Okay, give me a second. Let me let me uh, roll this down a little bit further. Sorry, I messed up my uh, truth table here because um, I was I got confused. Like I was doing a truth. Uh, the uh, proposition and the negation of the proposition. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to clean this up. Um, so here it's true, 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 false, true, false, false, true, and then false, and false. Not B is going to be um, the negation of B. So it would be false, false, true. 
false. True. Let's see what we have here. Okay. Yeah, I knew so. It looked like something was wrong there. All right, so let me sl let me slow down. So we have. Okay, we have. Okay, so we have our uh, truth table built up here, and now now everything should go out, go right. So um, A implies B would be. So we have a full truth table here. So it's going to be true under this interpretation. It's only going to be false when the consequent is true and the antecedent is false. So this one's going to be false, and the other two interpretations are going to be true. That's where that's where I'm, I uh, messed up. Um, so now we're going to do, for this one as well, so we're going to do not B and A. So this is the antecedent, this is the consequence. Um, so um, we know to, we're going to notice that it's only when this one's true and this one's false um, are they going to be different. Let me, I'm not sure if I verified this one before my notes. Okay, so not B imply false implies true. That would be true. Uh, true. True implies true. That's true. This doesn't seem to be working out. Must have been something. Must have done something uh, odd here. Let me see. True imply, oh, I'm on the wrong truth table, no wonder. False implies true. Implies A, true implies true.
Oh, my mic, my mic has been off for a while here. Let me see. I'm trying to trying to check something. I'm not sure how much has been lost. I'm trying to figure out how that got floated in with my. Those two, I had. Yeah, yeah. See, I did, I did copy it. I did copy it wrong. Okay, so that's where the that's where the problem was. So I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna just because my, since my mic was off, I'm gonna show you guys. So, starting from the top, um, this is just a minimal tautology, either a or not a. Um, it expresses the law of excluded middle. Um, let me see if I'm sharing. I'm not. Okay, I'm going to share screen again, see if I can get back through this. I got um, turned around. So, let's see if I can okay, present. Okay, so this, uh, like I said, just shows the law of excluded middle. And, um, hold on one second. All right, we're good to go. Let me see if I can share. There we go. Yeah, I copied it. I copied it down twice. So these are the these are the, the same thing. Both of these are the law of excluded middle. Here's the um, truth table for a and not a, and since inclusive or either one or both needs to be true in order for um, the formula to be true, then or the function. Then we see that this is a verified tautology. This is the same thing as above. That's a verified tautology. This is a logical identity. So these statements um, are saying the same thing. So being a logical identity, these are tautological. I, I, at least I think. At least I think that's how it is. So um, and just to go through, we filled out the truth table for A and B and their negations. And then we've noticed... Um, that A and B here, the only time that that's false is when the consequent, I mean, the antecedent is true and the consequence false, so it's true, false, true, true. We do the same thing for um, not B and not A. This this stack right here is the antecedent. This stack is a consequence. Antecedent, true, consequence, false is the only interpretation that's false, rest are true. These things um, are logically identical. They're saying the exact same thing. They're, they're, therefore, um, in an in equivalency, just to show you, in an in an equivalency, um, they both have to be the same. Um, so if one is true and the other is false, or one's false and the other is true, they can't be equivalent. They both have to be the same. So we know that these are both true, which means they're that the, the equivalency is true. These are both false. The equivalency is true here. These are both true. The equivalency here and here. So that would be. That would be why any any equivalencies um, must be tautological because if they're the same, then that interpretation is the same is true as an equivalency. So, and that's why that one um, is a verified tautology as well. So um, these two up top are the law of excluded middle. This one right here is the law of contraposition. Um, so moving on, took me I got hung up there a little bit. Moving on, this right here is um, a valid reductio ad absurdum. 
th this um, it just basically says that um, um, not if not a implies b and if not a implies not b then the implication of that is that not a is false therefore a must be true so that that must imply a um, and I, I don't think I've ever done this one before so I'm just going to kind of muddle through this so we need to do we need to do um, a we need to do all the ones we did before so this truth table right here will work Let's see if I can cut and paste it oops or maybe that's not the best maybe I should just go a B not a not B and then just true true I'll just copy the functions for the one above T TF FT F F. These are just their negations, so it's F F T T. And then this one is F T F T. All right, so now we need to do this. Okay, so this is going to be our antecedent, and then this is going to be our consequent. So, um, as you can see, this is the only interpretation that's going to be false, since this the antecedent implies consequence false here. So, none of the other ones match that. So, all the rest of the interpretations are true except the bottom one is false. So, we're going to go true, true, true. False. Now we need to do this function, and then we're going to apply the um, going to apply the and function to it. All right. So for this one, not a implies not b. So this is the antecedent. This is the consequent. So, um, and as you can see, the only one of those where is false is this one right here and all the rest will be true so this interpretation is false the rest are true and this one is true um, yeah okay and now we need to um, to both of these functions uh, we need to, our formulas, we need to apply um, the AND function. So what we'll notice here is I'm going to do this entire formula here. Oh, that did not work very well. See if I can lower it down just a little bit. 20. have to do it lower I guess below so we're going to do it for this one now which is which is applying the and function to both of these so I'm going to do it over here and then we can apply it to the bottom so this is true this is true so the um, function for the and is that uh, basically um, the only in time when the interpretation is true um, on a conjunction is when um, both uh, pro both are true, both propositions and the compound are true. So um, these others are going to be false on the bottom here, I believe. I'm going to have to look over this. Just doing these all on the fly. So let's see what we got. Not A implies not B. So. True, false, true. Hey, what's up? Uh, hey, I'm just running through some stuff here. You're familiar with this? Yep. Okay, cool. Um, let me let me see. Lost my lost my place. So, yeah. So that these both would be true. 
crap. I don't have enough room, so I'll do it here. True, true, false, false. I think that's right. Um, so true and true, true and true, and these would both be false and false. Okay, so now we need to do these imply A. So A would be... It would be the same thing as these, T, hold on, T, T, F, F. Um, so let me just see if I'm right here. That's my truth table for A, T, T, F, F, and then T, T, F, F is mine for these two. So, um... Yeah, and the reason why this is a tautology is because true implies true is true. True implies true is true. False implies false is true. False implies false is true. The only time when that would be false is if the antecedent was true and the consequent is false, and that doesn't happen here, so that's another verified tautology there. Sweet. So that's, um, I know that the, it's hard to follow, but I'm, I'm sure that's, that's right. The formatting looks really jacked up. Um, all right, I'm just going to do one more. I, I don't even um, think this is very interesting for anybody, but I was just going to, I was just farting around with this, and I figured I would do it live just for anyone that, that cared. Um, so I don't even know if um, people... So let me see if I can give a little background information to kind of what um, I'm doing. So we're... We're verifying tautologies and formal logic, which would mean that no matter how you change the propositional variables um, values of being true or false, that no matter what, because of the formula in every interpretation, it's going to be true. So it's, imp it's impossible to be false, um, and that's what it would make it um, a tautology. So I'm going to do I'm going to do one more, and then I don't know. I may do a couple of equivalencies. I think I already did. An equivalency here that actually is a tautology, which is the law of contraposition. And then this right here is just the law of syllogism. This is what everybody uses in, um, like when they say um, Socrates um, is a man, uh, or all men are mortal, Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates is immortal. That's what they're applying here is the law of syllogism. Um, so let me see. So I need to do A, B, and C. So this would be, a, this, these are tough for me to do. This is a three tiered, um, this is a three tiered um, variable, which um, is going to be, so it would be, um, what is it? Uh, two times, no, two to the third power is how many um, c categories I'm going to have. So it should be, I guess it's, it's eight. It's going to be eight variable rows. I don't know. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So it's going to be, yeah, so two to the fourth power is eight. So this one's going to be T. I have a hard time making these up. I have to do them top to bottom. F, whoa. Let me see. F, F, F. And then, um, let me see. We do T, T. F, 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 T, um, T, F, T, F, T, F, um, I don't know, where am I, these are complicated for me to do, I need to look at my, uh, thing, How, is there an easy way that you, that you fill these out, uh, Cliff, because I just do them top to bottom and try to fill out everything, um, I even filled this one out wrong, you know what I'm saying? You got to get all your combinations. Yeah, so I just do, I do them from top to bottom, and I just do every one, and then eventually it'll meet in the middle. And I know there's always, see how these T's row down in a nice triangle here? And the F's will do the same, and then it all, um, yeah, so the only other one would be, um, what is it? F, T, T. Yeah, F, whoops, F, T, T, and then this one would be T, F, F. That should be right, because it, it should come down, the triangle should come down here. There it is. 
There that one is. And then, I don't know. I mean, look, I know I have one built up in my notes just in it, just to look over it really quickly, but that should be, I, there, there can't be any more combinations. Is that right, Cliff? I don't have a three, I don't have a three variable in my notes. There's eight, yeah. And they're all different, so they have to be. I just want to check it over real quick. I thought I had a, I thought I had a three variable in my notes. Perhaps not. Oh, well, I'm just going to have to trust it. Yeah, like if it was me, I usually do it like just from basic combinatorics, which is how you would do it. You'd go like T, 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 and you'd go like T, T, F, and you change the second one. So you'd go like, and then you change the first one and then do it. But I mean, it doesn't matter as long as you end up with all the combinations. Right. As long as we, and, and long as we keep them in order. So let me see. Um, so we're going to need to do this one. We're going to need to do this one. And we're gonna need to do, okay, let me see what we got here. All right, so A implies B, this one's just gonna have the four, right? Or no, I guess we would do it for every, all eight. Yeah, so this one um, is true. This one is true. It's just gonna have a couple redundancies in it. Uh, antecedents, true, consequence, false. It's false. This one's going to be true. This next one's going to be false. And wait, hold on a second. Let me just see if I'm right here. We're just doing these two. True, true, false, true, false. This one's true. And then this one's true. And then this one's true as well. All right, now we need to do B and C. These are going to be these two categories from left to right. So T and T is that one's true. Uh, true implies false. That one's that one's false. False implies true. This one's true. True implies true. This one's true. False implies false. True implies false, this one's false. False implies true, that's true. And then false implies false, that one's true. Let me just, just format it. Okay, and then we need to do this entire, this entire function or formula. How come I can never get that to work? It's so much easier on a sheet of paper. This is the last one I'm gonna do and then I'm gonna um, call it let me see. So I've got these two, and now we're just applying the AND um, function to these two. So this is going to be super easy. So I can just do that over here. So this one's going to be true. Um, since it's AND, it's only when both are true. So false. Every other interpretation is going to be false. False. False, and then both of these are true. I've never, I don't think I've done this one, verified this one before. Um, so that's going to be the function for this is going to be true, false, false, true, false, false, true, true. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's eight. Uh, man, this is a lot to keep in your head. This is good mental exercise, though. I think people could benefit from this. Um, so let's see. There's the whole. So now I've got. And I need to do A. Now I need to do A. A, C. A implies C. God, this is a lot. A. <laughs> A implies C. Now we're doing these two. So the, this category and this category. So those are both true. That's a, a antecedent true consequence false. So that one's going to be false. False. True, true, false, true. So these are both true. 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 
So let me see where we're at. AC. So true and true. True and false. That's false. True and true. False and true. True and false. So this one's going to be false as well. False and false. That one's true. False and true. That one's true as well. And false and false. That one's true as well. And if I made one mistake here, I'm going to be so burned. Let me, <laughs> let me see. Um, so now I have this. So then now th this is all. So the function would be these implying this. So, oh, beautiful. Hold on. I think I got it. I think I might have nailed it. So true and true. If they're an implication, would be true. False and false, if they're an implication, would be true. Please don't do me like this. Hear me. False. Hold on. False. So we're doing just these two categories right here, false and false. Um, and we, the only thing I'd be looking for is want this row to be true and this row to be false. So, um, and that doesn't exist. There's no true here that's false here. So they're all true under every single interpretation. That's another verified tautology. I was worried about that one. I, th I thought I was fucked there. But that's right. That has to be right. Um, so just to show it again, um, I did the entire function for this formula here, and that's the truth table here. And then these need to imply these. So I did the truth function for these, which would be this category and this category. And now I need to do the implication function for these. And the only time that would be false is when the antecedent here is true and one of the consequence false, but that scenario TF never happens here. Never, not once. So they're all true. And that's it. There's another verified tautology. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm going to take a break after that. There's a cute few equivalencies I wanted to do, but, um, you know, it's probably not important. Anyways, all right, I'm going to stop sharing. We're, so I don't know how much anyone uh, could benefit from that, but um, that's how you would go about um, verifying um, tautologies in a, in a truth table. Um, formally. Um, and so that just kind of is a basic overview of how to do it. It's a lot harder to do in a word pad than it is to do on a sheet of paper, obviously. And, um, you know, one mistake can, can predicate a, a whole huge amount of mistakes for the rest of the work. As you can see, when I copied um, the law of contraposition wrong, it just screwed me for like three formulas because I had to go back and it, it didn't, it didn't happen until I went back and caught myself by looking at the actual initial formula. And then I was like, Oh, you know, this is, this is wrong. And that's why it's not reading out. Right. Um, so I think a lot of the stuff might not have been so cut and dry unless you understood the functions for, um, basically like the, and the inclusive or, the function uh, for negation, and then um, implication, and then equival equivalency. So unless you knew the functions for those, you might not, because I didn't, I only went through uh, the function for the inclusive or it wasn't all really put out there. But, you know, regardless, uh, it's a good mental exercise. And if you guys want to do some um, tautologies and equivalencies with me in the future, we, we can do that. Because an easy way to do it is we could just build a large formula with like, four or maybe even five propositional variables and then just apply the law of contraposition or just apply um, the rule of material implication or something like that um, as the rule of implication as an inference rule or something and then we could uh, we could just uh, basically construct our own tautologies and work through them and stuff um, but anyways I appreciate you guys checking this out and um, I will I'll see you guys later